Hi guys, I'm Mark from G-Code Tutor. I'm here with Practical Machinist to discuss CAN cycles today. So we used CAN cycles to greatly speed up our programming with G-Code and it gets rid of a lot of code. It also makes it a lot easier for us to read. McCann cycles is our G81 drilling cycle, our G82 countersink cycle, our G83 peck drilling cycle, our G84 tapping cycle, or G85 and G86 boring cycles. These are our CAN cycles. And we know they're CAN cycles because we have to cancel them once they're active with G80. So once we've seen one of these G codes, we would always end the sequence with G80 to tell the machine that we have finished using this cycle. Now CAN cycles is not the only type of cycle our machine is capable of. It's also capable of multiple repetitive cycles. Now we tend to use these more on a lathe than a mill, but they're there for our use. So for example, our G70 is our finishing cycle. G71 would be our roughing cycle. G72 our facing cycle. G74 is our face grooving cycle. And G76 is a screw cutting cycle. Now these cycles we don't need to finish with G80 to cancel them. These are used to remove material and they're multiple repetitive cycles. So back to CAN cycles. This is a full sequence of codes to drill these three holes using a drilling cycle, a G81 drilling cycle to be exact. And the G81 drilling cycle block of code looks like this. So we can see how condensed the code is when we start working with cycles. Now, if we compare this to an outputted code from a CAD CAM machine, we would see pages and pages of spaghetti code now going through everything that these cycles do, like point by point. By using cycles when we're programming G-code, we can speed that up and compress the program to just a few lines. And I think that's why a lot of people are a bit put off by G-code programming at first, because they first see it produced by CAD CAM machine and think, whoa, that's a lot of code I've got to write, but not so. Now CAD CAM programs and software is actually getting a lot better for using cycles in the modern times. Over the years, I've started to see cycles being introduced to our CAD program. So this is not always the case now, but certainly the older CAD CAM programs would always output point to point and we'd end up with pages and pages of code to do a very simple part. So that's what a CAN cycle is. So let's have a look at how they work. So I'm gonna take the most simplest of CAN cycles that we have, the G81 drilling cycle. And this is the most basic drilling cycle. So we're starting off our block of code with G81 and we're also ending it with G80 once the drilling cycle is complete, just to let the machine know that we're no longer using the drilling cycle. On the first line, the cycle line, we have some more information about what we expect our cycle to do. Now, if we add a Z depth to any position of the hole, this will overwrite this depth here. But if we do not have a depth, it will default back to this depth. So in this case, it will drill all holes at 12 millimeters deep, assuming that our dating position is the top face of the part. Now, again, if any holes in our sequence are at a different depth, we just state that Z depth next to the hole. And by emitting it, it defaults back to the one in the cycled line at the top here. This R value here is our retract value. If we don't have this on this line, the tool will automatically retract back to the last known rapid position in Z. But by adding this here, it will come up plus one millimeter above our datum position. So again, if our datum is the top face of the component, this will wrap it up our tool after each hole is drilled to one millimeter above the surface of the component. And at the end of the line here, we have to issue a feed rate. So the machine knows how fast to remove material. So that completes our CAN cycled line, our first line of our cycle. Now we can add our X and Y dimensions here to locate the position of the first hole, or we can position it before this line, as I've done with this program here, but it's not showing. So I've already positioned above the first hole before I run this sequence. So the machine will read this line, drill the first hole to 12 millimeters of depth, wrap it up to one millimeter above the surface and wait for the next command. And the next command is to move in 50 millimeters along our X axis. So all we have to do is give the position of the next hole and the machine will take care of everything else. It will drill it straight to 12 millimeters depth and wrap it up to one millimeter above the surface at a feed rate of 250 millimeters per minute. 
So the machine knows we're using the CAN cycle. It knows it's a G81 drilling cycle. So we just need to give it the positions of the holes from now on and the machine will take care of the rest. It will fill in the blanks for us. And this is why coding with CAN cycles is so much quicker. So our third and final hole here is a two axis move. We move in both X and Y to the position of this hole. And we can add more information here if we need to. If this hole is a different depth, we can give a different Z depth here so it drills to that depth and not the one on the G81 line. Now you may have noticed we're using incremental movements here. Our axis movements are relative to the last known position of the cutter. This is in contrast to absolutes where all dimensions come from the datum. Now this is where we need to be careful and know our machine because some machines, when we go into G81 mode, into a CAN cycle, into a drilling cycle, it automatically puts the machine into incremental mode for us. Other machines, we have to do it ourselves by adding a G91 to put the machine into incremental if we wish to do this. So just bear that in mind. It does depend on the makeup of your machine, the make, the model, the age, the software it runs, and all sorts of other variables that will affect this. So not all machines do switch into incremental when we switch into a drilling cycle mode. So just bear that in mind. And if your machine does not, we need to add G91 to switch into incremental. And once we're done with our incremental mode and we wish to switch back to absolute, we would issue G90. Now, if we're doing a countersink hole, maybe a spot drill, we might want to have our cutter dwell at the final depth of the hole. And for that, we would need to use a G82. Now, by adding a P value here, we can add a dwell time to the bottom of that drilled hole. So P500 would add half a second dwell time when the cutter reaches the full depth of that hole. With the different CAN cycles, we can add in different information. For example, if we're PEC drilling with G83, we can add the depth of PEC using a Q value. So Q3 would take a three millimeter cut between each PEC. And we can add a lot of other information here with PEC drilling. This is just a quick look at one option of why we use different CAN cycles for different features. And finally, I just want to mention if we are tapping with G84, we would use a feed rate that is equal to the pitch of the tap or the pitch of the thread that we are going to machine. So we would change our feed rate to this because it would switch over the machine to feed per revolution and not feed rate per minute when we are tapping. So that's a very brief introduction to CAN cycles and the reasons why we would use them.